or tree. My dearest and most beloved and divine brothers and sisters in Islam, in the concourse of humanity and the fraternity of religions, I pray that may the peace, the blessings of Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the one universal true God of all humanity and of all creations, bless you and grant us peace wisdom and harmony. At this time, I wish to continue on the program, the New World Order, which I had started some weeks ago, and some which were repeated because of um, public requests for a repetition of a particular program on a new human global order, based on a book written by one Maulana Muhammad Ali. My brothers and sisters of Islam, but before I get on to the program, and the contents of the program, some very important social aspects of Guyana I wish to comment on. One of them is the spirit or demon possession of a woman from the dead in a drain recently. This is the clipping taken from the newspaper, the Kaito News, and it was in the other newspapers as well, subsequently. Dead Marcel Cummings, and according to this article, she was crying out for help. She was telling her family that she was something was speaking to her and moving her and pushing her, uh, telling her exactly how to die quickly by laying herself like this over a pool of water, and that she would die. Now, what is troubling to me? is that she has family, relatives, and she never displayed any such behavior before. That, she was crying out to the community for some help, but no one listened to her. Now we have got to understand that man, we, yes, we are a physical being, but we also have a spirit competent component within us. And we have got to understand that within us is the spirit of God. And there are certain things that we could do that could drive the Spirit of God out of us. The Quran tells us this. The other scriptures tells us this. For the evil or the satanic forces to enter into us, we have got to invite them in. For we are, according to the religion of Islam, even higher than the angels. And while we have the capacity of thought and ability to think, Angels do not have that. They are mere robotic creatures carrying out the will of God and, 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 and performing a particular uh, service. Now, this woman, sometime in her life, might have made some error. One being alcoholic, being consumed with, um, with drugs or whatever. I'm not saying this is the case. But something happened and the evil or the demon, demon possession entered into her because of some weakness that she might have displayed. In, I know that our Imams, as children growing up, our, our, our movies, our Maulanas, have been teaching us that women should never shower when they are naked. They need to pull over what is called a half-slip 
up to above their breast and then shower. Because there are certain beings up there made of smokeless fire called jinn that are moving around that has the capacity of thought like us. But then we are higher than them even though we are made from mud or from clay. And they are made of smokeless fire. And that is where the whole evil and the whole um, satanic works and jet came about because Iblis or Lucifer according to the Holy Bible did not accept that something made out of mud would be greater than he and he was the greatest of the jinn creation now there are certain evil existing out there and sadly there are certain peoples and institutions who are worshipping these things and there are certain peoples who are using them to hurt people at, at the cost of others and then there are certain people who unwittingly unknowingly by error invite the evil in alcoholism as I told you gambling intoxication and this is why in these kinds of situations more people commit murders there are more accidents on the road because the evil has entered into the individual this, uh, this situation of this woman dying in this state and, and the community not doing enough for her is a very sad sad one we heard also of a situation at Qualform, the, the, the company that has a communications uh, system when people call in to talk to them as if they're talking to them overseas. Qualform is doing a very good job in the country providing employment to many people and we have complimented them with that. Now my problem is again, the same, thing I, the same problem I have even with my family at times and, and other people, when we construct we cannot construct our building like a box, like just a box with shiny mirrors around, as we see around the place, or golden mirrors, without the balcony or veranda, and without doors that can open. We do not have a reliable supply of electricity. And because we don't have a reliable supply of electricity, systems will fall, systems will break, air conditioners will collapse, sudden blackouts, and there are times, if you have a powerful generating system, and the generator could also uh, in Guyanese language, conk out or knock out or don't function. And some people are saying this is precisely what happened there. The AC system was not working, but they had no windows that they could open because the place is locked up like a, like, like a square box. And I find these buildings to be very ugly and hideous as far as I'm concerned. And very, very, uh, not very useful, so to say. These things are made for a North American society, some places in China. Japan and Europe, where they have very reliable nuclear powered form of electric supply. So I think if the system comes out, I think the management of uh, Qualcomm should have asked their employees to leave. But of course they have contracts with overseas customers and if they cannot provide the service that the overseas customer need, they will be in trouble. So maybe this is what happened. They are saying also that that entire area are graveyards and there was a morgue there, more than one morgue there, where, where the dead was cleaned and, 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 and prepared and buried and so forth. Um, while we Muslims believe the dead is dead and the dead is dead and gone, um, we make prayers for them and so forth, there are certain evil forces that is caught between heaven and hell. There are certain forces that people commit suicides. They, these people commit suicides becoming according, as far as I know, and according to the religion of Islam and even according to the religion of the Christianity and the other religions, they, they were not born to die that way, so they committed suicide and they're caught in between. These spirit forces, until the time reaches for them to die, cannot find a resting place. And so they will move around the earth. Some of them very bad, some of them who died in, uh, as children um, and committed suicide would be suffering, being abused by the older evil ones uh, that understand and have been there for a while and can manipulate them and play games and tricks. It is also known and believed, according to the religion of Islam, that uh, evil jinns, in the jinn people who are like us but made of smokeless fire, they are people with thoughts and sometimes they play games. They, some of them are very good, they worship Allah and they worship God Almighty, they, 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 they serve humanity, they, they, some of them are healers and, 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 and good forces, but then some of them are evil and wicked, just like how we have normal human beings made of 
of clay like us. Some of them are bad and some of them are good and some of them are in between. So now, I just wanted to share that for a moment and to remember at all times women, sisters, cover yourself from your, your above of your breast to below your waist with something like a half slip when you're taking your shower. And try as much as possible to cover parts, the main parts of your privacy when you are changing your clothes and so on, have towels wrapped around you and all these kinds of things because these guys are moving around and they could enter you and they could injure you and they could hurt you. Evil exists as much as good exists. God is not a creator of evil. Shabbat Huwa Ta'ala, the creator, the Lord of the worlds, the Yahweh, the Elohim, the Om. He, God Almighty, will not create evil. He was a creator of only good. But out of the good that he created came forth evil. It was from e ego and uh, the fact that Lucifer, Iblis, did not want to accept Adam and Eve as the highest beings. That is where the evil came about and the battle and, and, and so forth and a third of them uh, were kicked out from heaven. The sons of God looked upon the daughters of men and lost their thereof according to the Holy Bible. These are not angelic beings. These were the jinn beings with the capacity of thought who could lust angels can't lust except worship Allah. So I feel very sorry for this woman and any people caught up in situations like that to please remember if you're Christians it's way to clean it. Bring pastors of caliber, not the wicked ones, and imams and maulanas, we have some wicked ones too, of caliber and decency and honor, and surround your home or your, your place inside the home and meditate and hum very beautiful hymns or, 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 or Quranic verses and biblical verses and so forth to chase the evil away and pray I have the water, pure water, preferably rain water, in the middle while you're while you're doing the recitation and the recital, so the water could absorb the vibrations of God and the beautiful words, and that could be used to shower the person. The person could drink it. You could throw it around the yard and so forth. Burn some holy incense and so forth, and keep on playing holy and good music. These are some of the ways I see as a layman. In these things because I do believe evil exists and I'm not the one who specializes in, 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 in exercising demons but I know these are some of the ways that they could be eliminated prayer meditation peace harmony calling upon God and group prayers group prayers very very important so with that in mind my dearest brothers and sisters I wish to also um, make some quick points and this is necessary for our country, sometimes I have to digress from the topic of hand for the cause of our country and our discipline and so on. But I observed that our people, sadly, Guyanese people, and I'm calling on the churches and the, the masjids, uh, male and female section, I'm calling on the, on the, on the Hindu groupings and, 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 and civil society in general, the various ministries and so forth that are responsible for places like cinemas and the National College Center, which might be the Department of Youth and Sports. To please understand very seriously and very importantly, Guyanese don't know how to behave in a cinema. They don't know how to behave in a National Culture Center, at least some of them. Uh, we have to do something, and I'm starting it here, and I'm going to the media, and I'm going to write the Minister of, of Education. And I will write the Minister of Youth Sports and all or the Minister of Home Affairs and so on to ask for people, for them to go on certain campaign to teach people how to behave in, in, in a public arena such as a National Culture Center. Now, I recall when I was acting in the movie Dosti. And because of that, I went a few other times to other shows to see how guys would behave. And I would observe when at times of great sadness, some men. But mostly women, at the time of at sadness, when the serious people, the serious patrons, are in with the show. They are in with the program. They are one with the show. And in some sad cases, they will shed a tear. And they will have the feeling. But some of some women will, hee 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 hoo 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 And even some men 
talking loud, talking nonsense, you can clap, you can, you can, you can, you can smile, and so you can cry, but stop mocking this, the, the scene, or the directors, or the actors. It is a very humiliating thing. So I thought this was mostly prevalent in the Indian community because that was the show called Dosti, a very emotive, a very intellectual story that calls for thinking and for the patron to be a part of the acting and the message of the story. The women that were behaving sometimes so vulgarly when a child was going through a difficulty and crying, when a sister was crying for her brother, when a blind brother was crying for his sister and certain people, Indian people, indo guys in this case, were giggling and laughing. You can recognize the voice that is indo guys It's a shameless and a, a terrible and evil thing to do. You demotivate the actors. You could distract them. So I'm calling upon the authorities, I'm calling upon the people at the National Culture Center and so forth to keep on announcing and reminding everyone to don't make mockery, don't throw remarks, and when they behave like this, you must have proper security, and so on, to eject them out of the culture center. The culture center, as I recall, when it was built by Lyndon Forbes Samson Barnum, was supposed to be a place of decorum and high ideals, a great, of exchange, a great place for exchange of ideas and wisdom, and for the theatrical arts to be exposed and guys to be given the chance to act in like an international arena. Given all of the stake for whatever reasons, so many reasons I do not think much of Mr. Lyndon Forbes Bar for Burnham, but I think highly for him for that. And for some other things too that he had done. I like to give Jack his jacket. And the National Culture Center was a great wisdom because if he had not constructed that, using whatever funds he may might have, we would not have had a National Culture Center today. So kudos to Mr. Bornham. But people of Guyana. I'm asking you all to spread the message. Children listening to this program, tell your parents it's not good to behave like that. Because when they misbehave, you tell them, you're causing me to turn like you. So I'm calling upon the, the authorities, the ministries, to sort of please pay attention to this. Same thing with the cinemas. We have some nice cinemas open up now. I have to give the Abinash Complex compliments for pioneering cinemas in this country again. But sometimes some people go into the cinemas and they misbehave and they suck the teeth or they raise voice and telephones ring, cell phones and so on. They must be able to eject these people out of the cinemas. They need to warn them seriously in, in, in announcement before the program and to bring people to tell them, you're misbehaved, you need to leave the place. Same thing with, with Princess. Princess has brought in a wonderful system for sound, clarity and original 25mm films of most modern movies being released in the United States or Europe. Fine, great, beautiful. We need places of entertainment. But there are some, some, some women taking out their breasts. God bless them, they have that power. And breastfeed their child without even trying to show a little bit of manners by covering the part which has been exposed. As a matter of fact, little babies should not be allowed in cinemas. Because their immune system is weak. People could be sneezing. People could have allergies. People could have asthma, people could have other communicable diseases, tuberculosis and so forth, and little babies should not be allowed in cinemas. And that is why they have shows also where they say under 16 must be accompanied by an adult. Parental guidance is necessary. So I think the people of Princess Hotel, you need to get your act together. You need to have it established. Anybody, everybody must turn their cell phones off. Or you set a system whereby you scan everybody. And you take away their cell phones and when the movie is finished they can go collect their cell phones again. Something has to be done. Then you have some big strong security personnel there, which appears to be like you imported them from some other country. But they're just standing there like um like loose brain dead guys. Princess Cinema, you need to get your act together. No cell phones, no noise, no mockery. No throwing of remarks while the actors are on. Are, 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 and if they don't like the show, they are welcome to leave. You have to have some discipline in this country. The law, this country morality is falling apart. There's too much of lawlessness. There's too much of noise. There's people like to scream too much. We have to stop. There's too much of alcoholism. So I will go on with the other parts, my brothers and sisters, some other time. 
such as the lewdness, the vulgarity, the lawlessness, the alcoholic consumption, what is going on in um what is going on in 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 um in in, in, in Orange Walk, where Mr. Hamilton Green has may have built some very nice little thing which he learned, I know, from South Korea, which he was supposed to be businesses for individuals that turned whole entire place into a place of noise nuisance, a place of, of of illegal gambling, drugs dealing, and consumption of alcohol and interfering with the decent people who complained. Com compliments to the former commander of A Division, or the, the senior superintendent of A Division, Mr. Watts, for having taken some action there with the GRA. You need to do it again in Orange Walk. May the peace, the mercies, and the blessings of God Almighty be with one and all. That is the message for that in Palestine. For the time still afforded to me, um, I would like to speak to you on a summary of Islamic teachings. And in this case, I wish to speak about women and marriages. A woman is a free person in the fullest sense of the word, as a free man. This water is supplied by Deborah Diamond is still is limited. I purchase it from them. The program is not sponsored by them, but I like Diamond Distillers. I'm grateful to them for many good things they have done to my life in the past. Diamond Distiller Mineral Water. A woman is a free person in the fullest sense of the word. As free as a man. She can earn property according to the religion of Islam, Quran 4, 32. If there are still some Muslims who don't think so. She can own it and dispose of it as she likes. The Holy Quran, chapter 4, 4. Make note of these, these pointers I'm speaking about. Women are free. 432. She can own property and dispose of it as she likes. 4, 4. Holy Quran. She can inherit profit property like the male or along with the male heirs. Quran 4, 7. Spirituality too. She stands on a level with the male. Take note, the Holy Quran, chapter 3, 194, chapter 40, 40, chapter 16, 97. She is even recognized by Islam, Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the worlds, by the Prophet of Islam and the Quran. She is even recognized as being the recipient of divine revelation. Quran 341. The Holy Quran 28, 7. So she's a prophetess. Example, Mary or Miriam, mother of Christ. Marriage relationship is given the same importance as blood relationship. Marriage in Islam is a very serious component of human civilization and growth. Marriage serves as a double purpose in human society being the means of moral uplift of man and of the multiplication of human race celebrate celebrate life is against the teachings of the holy quran which requires every muslim to live in a married state for example celibacy those who do not believe that they should marry according to this religion or that religion if that is to happen, then there will be no human rights. And those people who are celibate, and I'm not attacking anybody, but for example, the, the priestly ones of the, of, of the Roman Catholic Church, we see how many child molestations they have been involved with, cases of hidden marriages, and fornication, and illegitimate children around the world. And then sometimes they, part they participate in, in what is a self-satisfaction, not having a female partner to to marry and to satisfy that part of human nature. So this is a, a reality of life. So Islam is completely against celibacy. And all of us are compelled to be married. Quran 24, 32. If, every, if anyone has not the means of, for marriage, he should try to keep himself chaste or clean by other means. 
Marriage is a sacred contract which a man and woman enter into by mutual agreement. A sacred contract blessed by God. Where a man and woman are the witnesses. Temporary marriage is a forbidden. Bukhari 64.40 A Muslim is forbidden within certain degrees of relationship. There is a, marriage is forbidden within certain degrees of a relationship. Like nieces and nephews and so forth. The rule is the marriage of a man with one woman. The rule of law in the religion of Islam. Contrary to the misguidance of enemies of Islam. And some people who are enemies of Islam promulgate the idea that they are the greatest friends of Islam, that man is entitled to take four wives. But the rule is the marriage of one man with one woman. But in exceptional cases, a man is allowed to take another wife. Exceptional cases. In societies where there is an abundance of women and not enough men. To prevent those women from going into prostitution. To prevent those women from suffering. Not know what it's like to be a family. Or in the event of war where the men are killed out. And there are few men. Then some of them. These few men will marry more women to give them a home, a name and a comfort to their children. It is all seriously sociological and scientifically based. It also, we are told that marriage should be preceded Marriage should be preceded by a proposal according to Bukhari 67.27. It is recommended but before, that before making a proposal, a man should satisfy himself as to the desirability of the match. He has to see her, he has to ensure that she is the right kind of person and that he will feel comfortable, loving and he would desire her and want to be with her. Tirmidhi 9.5 these are people who wrote hadith or the life of the Prophet after the Prophet have left. People like Bukhari, when you hear me, you Muslims don't know, or Tirmidhi or Bukhari again. It is re the guard, the guardian must obtain the woman's consent for marriage. That is, the, if the woman is brought up by a parent or a relative, there always must be some kind of permission. It is very much against the law of Islam to force any woman into marriage. Where a woman was given in marriage by her father and she disliked the match, the marriage was annulled. According to Bukhari 67.43 Marriage among equals is recommended. It is always best that people of one status or society marry people of the same status or society. And this is where some people don't understand the casteism of India. Because within the caste they were married always within their level. There's a reason. When someone who might not be of a certain social status marries someone of another social status, it could create conflict, for example. A, a poor guy, but being good looking and talented, might marry into a wealthy family. But when there is a disagreement, the woman could tell the guy, you come from a low class family. You, are, you lack this or you lack that. And same thing the other way. The guy could tell the woman, I marry you out of sympathy. And uh, you, and, and that woman might not have been to the economic or educational level of, of the husband, would be humiliated, cursed and abused. So it's always better for people to try and marry within their levels. Nobility of character is the most valuable gift of a woman which should be taken into consideration in marrying her. So if a man is from a higher family but he's marrying someone from not such an economically based or uplifted family, we must look at the nobility of her character which would be a good way also to bring her status to bridge. This is the power of the religion of Islam to try to elucidate and to create understanding and wisdom and cooperation so that people would not humiliate each other. My brothers and sisters, 
I took quite a lot of time on social issues, and so I will have to continue with this, marriages and so forth, on social issues in the new human global order. Um, I thank you for tuning in to the Electric Mosque's presentation of the teachings of Islam, and I pray that may the peace and may the mercies and the blessings of God Almighty be with one and all, bless our country with wisdom and harmony, enter into the hearts and soul into our po politicians, some of who are, are very egotistical, envious, jealous, and some also who have the power and does not want uh, to relinquish some of their powers. And we must remember, nowhere in the world can any political party stay in power forever. The best thing to do is to bring all together and let's have power sharing and national sharing of our resources and of our peace and harmony and build a great and a beautiful and a magnificent country. May the peace, may the mercies, may the blessings of God Almighty be with the nation Guyana. I thank you. Assalamu alaikum.